Repair Clinic encourages you to perform this procedure safely. In this video, we will show one or more of these icons to alert you when to use caution. Most snowblower repairs will require some disassembly of the product. Before you attempt this, make sure the engine has cooled. Next, remove the wire in boot from the spark plug to prevent the engine from accidentally starting. To avoid spills, we recommend emptying the fuel tank as well. To remove the frame cover, carefully tip the snowblower forward so it rests on the auger housing. Use a 3 8 inch socket to remove the mounting bolts securing the frame cover. Pull the cover off to access the hex shaft, friction wheel, and the extension spring. To remove the hex shaft and friction wheel, use a 9 16 inch socket to help unthread the mounting bolts securing the left wheel. Slide the wheel off of the axle. Secure the hex shaft close to the gear and use a 9 16 inch socket to loosen the mounting nut. Unthread the nut to the end of the shaft to protect the threads, then gently tap the shaft to release it from the frame. Now fully unthread the nut and remove the hex shaft from the frame. You can now remove the friction wheel. Reinstall or replace the friction wheel by positioning it on the speed selector arm. With the wheel in place, realign the hex shaft and slide it into position. Thread the mounting nut on and tighten. Apply some lubrication to the shaft. Make sure to clean any spill from the drive disc. Replace the wheel and secure it with the mounting bolt. Realign the frame cover. and replace the mounting bolts to secure. Return the snowblower to its upright position. To access components inside the control housing, first remove the retaining clip to release the chute control rod and pull the rod free. Again, carefully tip the snowblower forward so it rests on the auger housing. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the screws, securing the handle to the control lever. Slide off the handle. Use the 3 8 inch socket to remove the mounting bolts, securing the control housing to the console. Next, remove the bolts securing the grounding wire. You can now pull the control housing free of the console. Remove the screws securing the two halves of the control housing together. Separate the housing to access the pinion and bevel gears, as well as the four-way cables. 
Reassemble the control housing by joining the two halves together, making sure the control cable is routed through the access hole and control lever slot. Replace the screws to secure. Realign the control housing in the console. Replace the mounting bolts to secure. Realign the grounding wire and secure it with the bolt. Now slide the handle onto the chute control lever and secure it with the screws. Return the snowblower to its upright position. To detach the chute gearbox and chute assembly, remove the retaining clip securing the support bracket pin and pull out the pin. Next, unthread the wing nut from the center gearbox mounting bolt you can now lift the gearbox off of the support bracket and set the gearbox and chute assembly aside. To access the drive pulleys and belts, use the 3 8 inch socket to remove the bolts securing the belt cover. Pull the cover off. To remove the gearbox support bracket, first release the drive belt idler pulley tension spring. Now use a half inch socket to remove the upper two mounting bolts securing the bracket. Use a three quarter inch socket to remove the lower bolt. With the bolts removed, you can now detach the support bracket. To fully release the control panel and access the carburetor, Use a 10 mm socket or wrench to remove all of the mounting bolts securing the muffler cover. Lift off the cover. Now remove both the choke knob and the throttle knob. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to unthread the lower starter switch box mounting screw. Detach the primer line and the ignition switch wires. Use the 10 mm socket to remove the nuts threaded on the carburetor mounting posts. You can now pull the control panel free. To remove the carburetor, first release the retaining clamp securing the fuel line to the tank and pull the line off. Next, slide off the front choke plate gasket. Remove the choke plate itself and detach it from the choke linkage. Slide off the rear gasket. Detach the throttle spring and linkage from the carburetor and you can slide the carburetor off of the mounting posts. Reinstall the carburetor by first confirming that the intake gasket is intact, then slide the carburetor onto the mounting posts. Reconnect the throttle linkage and spring. Next, slide on the rear choke plate gasket. Replace the choke plate 
and reattach the choke linkage. Slide on the front gasket. Reconnect the fuel line to the tank and secure it with the retaining clamp. Continue the reassembly by repositioning the control panel, making sure the choke plate stem protrudes through the hole in the panel, and the breather tube connects to the air intake box. Align the primer line in the groove on the panel. Thread the nuts on the mounting posts and tighten. With the control panel in place, re-thread the lower starter switch box mounting screw. Reattach the primer line and the ignition switch wires. Replace both the choke and the throttle knobs. Realign the muffler cover. Thread and tighten the bolts to secure. Now reposition the chute gearbox support bracket and replace the bolts. Reset the tension spring on the lower bolt. Replace the belt cover. Rethread the bolts and tighten. Reposition the chute assembly on the chute adapter as you realign the gearbox on the support bracket. Confirm that the center mounting bolt is in place in the gearbox housing. Then thread the wing nut on and tighten. Reinsert the support bracket pin and secure it with the retaining clip. Confirm that the holes in the gearbox coupler are facing straight up with the chute facing forward and that the chute control lever is at the 1 o'clock position. Now insert the rounded end of the chute control rod into the gearbox coupler and the hex end into the control coupler. Secure the rod with the retaining clip and confirm that the chute has a full range of movement. To remove any auger assembly components, first remove the belt cover. Now unhook the auger belt from the engine drive pulley. Use the 3 8 inch socket to remove the bolts securing the front roller bracket and detach the bracket. Detach the auger drive cable spring from the idler pulley bracket. Now use the half inch socket to help remove the bolts and washers that secure the auger housing to the rest of the snow blower.
With the bolts removed, lift off the auger housing and rest the rear portion of the snowblower on its handles. Secure the impeller as you remove the bolt and washer securing the auger drive pulley. Remove the pulley. Remove the pulley hub as well. Next, unthread the mounting bolts securing the bearing holders. With the bolts removed, you can pull out the auger assembly. To reinstall the auger assembly, slide the impeller onto the rear gearbox shaft, if necessary. Now insert the rear gearbox shaft into the auger bearing. Replace the bolts to secure the bearing holders. Position the pulley hub on the shaft. With the belt aligned on the auger pulley, position the pulley on the hub. Slide the washer onto the mounting bolt. Secure the impeller as you thread the bolt and tighten. Before continuing the reassembly, we recommend injecting additional grease into the bearing holders to help prevent wear. Now reposition the auger housing on the rear portion of the snowblower, making sure to align the chute on the chute adapter. Rethread the housing bolts and tighten to secure. Return the snowblower to its upright position. Reattach the auger drive cable spring to the idler pulley bracket. Now realign the front roller bracket on the frame and replace the bolt to secure. Realign the auger belt on the engine drive pulley. Replace the belt cover. Rethread the bolts and tighten to secure. With the reassembly complete, reattach the spark plug wire and boot, refill the fuel tank, and your snowblower should be ready for use.